flow sheet diagrams and control volume. Many of the chemical engineering problems students encounter may be greatly simplified by drawing a flow sheet diagram of the process under consideration. This diagram is a schematic representation of what happens in the process and is usually drawn with boxes to represent process units and lines with arrows to represent streams. Any information that is known about the process can then be filled in on the diagram. For instance, the flow sheet diagram shown here depicts a mixing process in which a number of streams are combined. The lines with arrows represent process streams, i.e. the pipes which transport mass between the various process units, the boxes. The boxes are the process units where streams enter or exit and also where physical and chemical change takes place. These changes can be temperature changes, concentration changes, etc. The present flow sheet diagram shows three mixes with different streams entering and exiting them. The streams designated A and B enter mixer 1. Stream E exits this mixer. Stream C and D enter mixer 2 and stream F exits from it. Finally, streams E and F are combined in mixer 3 and stream G exits from it. Flow sheet diagrams are very useful because many details about the process may be inferred from a simple drawing. Moreover, it is also useful for organizing all the given information about the process, for instance, temperature, mass flow rates, or other variables, because it can be conveniently filled in on the diagram. This slide shows the same shame flow sheet as before, but now labeled with the temperature and mass flow rates of some streams. It's easy to spot that there is no information about temperature and mass flow rates for streams E, F, and G. We now move on to the concept of control volume. Control volume can be defined as that part of the process we are interested in analyzing at a particular moment, and we show it by drawing a boundary around it. It may consist of only parts of the process or of the entire process itself. Let's look at all the control volumes that may be drawn for our current example. The red line encloses the entire process. It defines that control volume which contains the whole system. It is very important that the boundary of a given control volume cuts all the streams entering and exiting at, as shown in the drawing. Since the red line cuts all the streams entering or exiting the process, it has been drawn correctly. The idea is to imagine the interior of the control volume as a single process unit, since we are only interested in visualizing those streams entering or exiting the system as a whole. You need to imagine something like this. And you should not worry about what happens on the inside of the yellow area. It is easy to see that streams A, B, C and D enter, and that only one stream, G, exits the control volume. If the line that defines the control volume does not cut any of the streams, it won't be possible to appreciate which streams enter or exit the process and therefore it would be wrongly drawn. It is important to remember that it would be incorrect to do the following. For whatever reason, the control volume has been drawn to avoid cutting streams B and C. This is a mistake that a few students make in exams. However, they are only lying to themselves if they think that a control volume can be defined this way. In the event that you accidentally draw a control volume boundary that does not, not cut all the relevant streams, you would have to extend the lines of the streams so as to pierce the control volume. You have to realize that those streams that do not enter or exit a particular process unit have to be drawn so that they can be imagined as being infinitely long. Let's consider the other possible control volumes. This control volume takes into account all the streams crossing its boundary, i.e. A, B, F, and G. It does not take into account streams E, C, or D. Nor should we care about what happens in mixer 2 because it does not fall within the area defined by the control volume boundary. On the other hand, we cannot know what happens individually in mixers 1 and 3. The blue line therefore defines an entirely new process unit. Another option would be to isolate two other mixers. In this case, we will only be taking into account streams A, B, C, D, E, and F. Stream G will be left out when analyzing the process based on this control volume. Of course, the following control volumes may also be set up. One which contains mixers 2 and 3. One which contains only mixer 1. 
one which contains only mixer 2, and finally, one which contains only mixer 3. In conclusion, we have seen that there are control volumes that contain only one process unit, and then others that may contain several units or all of them. Once you have gained a certain familiarity with these diagrams, you won't have to use colored lines, but until then, it would be advisable to do so. Lastly, it is important to point out that it is also incorrect to do this. This error, rarely made by students in exams, occurs when they try to avoid taking into account stream E.